in this video I'm going to show you how I make zombie dolls. I made these for a Halloween display last year. To start off with you're going to need some old dolls and then I use a soldering iron as the first step followed by liquid latex paste and then you're going to need some primer and acrylic paints and then some fabric to make new clothes if you want to make some clothes for any dolls. First of all you need to remove all clothing from the dolls then mutilate them with a soldering iron. This isn't essential but it does help later on adding depth to any wounds. You can see from this picture I've kind of burnt out eyes or made random holes that look like maggots have um, made holes in the flesh. You can burn off toes and make big gashes as well which will look like the flesh is starting to break down. For step two, you need to make liquid latex paste and you do this by taking liquid latex, pouring it into a bowl, then just adding flour. I used wholemeal because I wanted a lot of texture in my zombie dolls. Um, it needs to be quite a stiff paste and then it will stick to the doll. So you just apply it all over or just in patches and once it's dried and you paint it, it's going to really add that texture that looks like rotting flesh. You can see I've done it differently on all of them. I did it in batches because the paste actually dries quite quickly. Also, make sure you protect your clothes because liquid latex, once it gets on there, never gets off again. Um, if you run out of paste, you can also just pour liquid latex on there and start to peel it off. Once the liquid latex is fully dry, leave it overnight. Um, just spray them all over with a grey primer. This will help with the base colour that you want for a zombie flesh, which is kind of a greyish green. And then you can go ahead and paint the dolls. To begin with, I made a kind of white and green and tiny bit of black to make a kind of greyish green colour. It doesn't matter if it's all the same, you just change the colour slightly so that it's all different. You can have different bits that are slightly more green than others. Once you've got the base colour down, you can go into all the gashes and the holes and add black paint and this really adds depth and makes it look like the wounds go very, very deep. Um, also paint all the eyeballs white and then make sure that all around the eyes is quite dark. And once you've done that, you can use blues, burgundies, purples and reds to kind of add bruising around all of the wounds on the flesh and this really kind of makes the wounds look angry. This girl's world I picked up off eBay for a couple of pounds and I did the same thing to her as well and she came out really well. I did the hair grey after I'd finished painting the body. Now you need to make some new clothes for any of the dolls if you want to replace them and I also made some umbilical cords for two newborn dolls that I had because I had a plan for those for my installation. To make these dungarees for my fabric bodied dolls I just measured the dolls and then just cut out very boxy shaped dungarees for all of them, made some straps of the same colour then added contrasting pockets on the knees and the, the bib of the dungarees. I sewed a little button on as well. Because these dolls are fabric bodied, I didn't need to make tops for them. I just basically used felt tip pens to put polka dots on so it looked like they were wearing kind of baby grows underneath. These are the umbilical cords. I dyed a little bit of twine um, with green paint first of all and then braided it in with some red wool. I attached it to the dolls using a bit of liquid latex paste. So now you just add the finishing touches. First of all, you can style the hair and add grey primer to it, add fake blood. You can make eyeballs out of ping pong balls if your doll's quite big, or you can use them out of thermal moldable plastic and use yarn um, to kind of add veins. I also made maggots out of liquid latex just by putting a large drop on a plate and once it had dried, rolling it up on itself and just attaching it to the wounds of one of the dolls with a touch of paste. These are a couple of the other dolls that I did some of them I just put nappies on and some of them I made clothes for. You can see the girl's world at the end there. I actually made a spine for her. I've done a video on this previously so I'll put a link in the description below but it was basically made using screw gun strips and mod rock. I also crocheted some intestines and entrails using different thicknesses of wool and just randomly crocheted a kind of spiral pattern and stitched it to roughly resemble the gut. Um, I've added a few tubes there full of red food colouring to look like blood vessels as well. So this is a picture of the whole family of the zombie dolls that I made for last year, um, all in the garden before I put them into the installation. 
my whole plan was to turn my front garden into a graveyard so I actually made some uh, tombstones and here's my cat investigating the zombie dolls um, I made tombstones out of um, loft boards and then I'm painted them to look like stone and I will do another video on how I did that I made a tombstone bed at the same time and put a bit of grey cheesecloth over it and then laid the girls world on there and that worked really well and was very very effective all the other tombstones um, just had one zombie baby there I added all sorts of other accessories like um, cheesecloth chains um, cobwebs I had some um, fake crows as well that were life-size that looked really effective sitting there if the doll have got a fabric body and won't hold their shape properly you can use tent pegs to make them stand up straight or you can kind of attach them to a croquet hoop the um, babies with the umbilical cords I actually buried the other ends of the cord so it looked like they were crawling out of the ground um, I used a couple of solar powered spotlights to kind of display certain parts of it but all the tombstones actually had battery operated LED lights and they were twinkling and flickering and it actually added a lot of atmosphere. I had a smoke machine as well so when there was mist kind of going between all the grey stones the whole thing looked really spooky. So thanks for watching and good luck if you make your own zombie dolls.